This is the Dave and Checky Show. We got this groovy podcast for ya. Reviewing crazy tunes or quoting Twain and Sting and Dune. We'll bring ideas to share like bonus points for extra flair. Cause it's the freaking Dave and Checky Show. Checky Show, we're bringing you this groovy review. We might preview movies, bake some bread, or drink some smoothies. So come on, have way too much caffeine. You roll up some rivers, I'll reference some Raffi. This is the Dave and Checky Show. Yeah, Peanuts fan club, can I help you? Uh, no, I do not like the peanuts, sorry. Well, you don't like peanuts? No, are you talking about the comic strip, or are you talking about the food item? What do you like more? I like the food item more. I was never a fan of Charlie Brown, I'm sorry to say. All right. Well, uh, how about Linus? Okay. Uh, I was never a fan of the Peanuts gang. Now we're getting a little bit racist. I don't think they're gang members. Okay. Just okay. because they live in Northern California don't mean they're affiliated with a gang. Okay. I don't mean gang like MS-13. I mean... Oh, 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 and it's not bring up uh, a specific gang. Uh, we have a contract here with another gang. We cannot mention that gang. I was not... Uh, I don't mean anything like MS-13, Crips, Bloods, whoa, 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 okay. Latin Let's, Kings. You know what? Let's just not mention any of them. Well, you know what? You brought this up. I'm just a member. I'm the head of the Peanuts fan club, for God's sake. And I'm trying to establish a uh, certain... Um, well, for quite frankly, a paradigm shift in the uh, peanuts appreciation. Uh, I think plenty of people appreciate the peanuts, especially Snoopy and Woodstock. Oh, well, they came for Mr. Potato Head, and they're coming for me next. I guess they are. I guess they are. Because... I am Mr. Peanut, for God's sake. Yeah. Uh, didn't you get it? Don't you get Make her bad, okay? What? I don't know. I'm sounding like Jordan Peterson or something. Is that what you're trying to do? I'm not trying. It's just happening. I see. I don't. I don't listen to Jordan Peterson so much, and so I'm not sure entirely what he sounds like. But if well, you I'll think he sounds my... like uh, you, then that's fine. I don't think so. Oh, I see. You just you sounded like a creepy weirdo. To this me. bit is going off the deep end. Speaking of which, I went off the deep end at Action Park. Okay, you know what? Let's let's. I don't like it. It's too much. Anyway, uh, you see, this is what happens, and then I don't, I don't say what the show is. All right, I, I let's come on. That was just a bit. It. That was a. That I, was everyone says do the bit, not to me in particular. But yeah, I just no. Have to do it anyway. you, get, you know what? Huh? Never ever saying do the bit. Oh. Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode one hundred and seven, one hundred and seven of the Middle Age Cool Kids Super Terrific Podcast, or. The Mac Podcast, whichever you prefer. Uh, anyway, this is the Mac Podcast featuring your pals. No one and anybody. I see. I would like to be anybody. Yeah, I'd like to be no one. There you go. So there we are. Uh, today's episode, as Dave has already let slip, is all about Action Park. <laughs> There's nothing in the world like Action Park. Baby, let me take you, baby. Action is hot. Action, Action Park. The story of Action Park is a true crime story. As you entered the park, you saw this thing. And you're like, this is real. The engineering behind this, if there was any engineering, was just nuts. Build it higher, make it faster. People control the action. Combine that with liquor and anything goes. There were no rules. For a lot of kids, that was heaven. And if you couldn't swim well, yikes. I don't think you can understand a place like Action Park if you don't understand the kind of minds that build it. A lot of people wish they could ignore rules. Gene actually did that. Nobody would give him insurance, so he created his own insurance company and then insured himself. It did bring sometimes a criminal element. I don't know how many people died at Action Park, but it wasn't just one person. Electrocuted. Decapitated. Fractured vertebrae. Impaled on the bowl. Had a heart attack. Nobody should ever be the second person to die in a wave pool. Close the wave pool. The action never stops.
Hey now, ho no, hey now. Recently, and by recently I mean yesterday, we watched a documentary called Class Action Park. Um, I, I kind of like Traction Park better as isn't a title. There a, but isn't there a movie? We, isn't there a movie that's similar? It's a real movie, though? Oh. Isn't that called Traction Park? Is it? What's the movie? It's like a Johnny Knoxville thing or something? I mean, Am I mistaken? Oh, Action Point. I don't know. What's that? A daredevil designs and operates his own theme park with his friends. That's. I think it's based on Action Park. Am I mistaken? And you might be mistaken only because the guy who ran Action Park was not a daredevil. No, but I'm saying he was probably inspired by a place like Action Park. Yeah, I Why mean, would you call it Action Point? I would even say that the font looks somewhat similar on his movie poster. All right. Would you prefer we have watched that? No, I thought that's what we were watching. No, just kidding. Uh, you I would did? Not, no, I would not have preferred because uh, I enjoyed yesterday's documentary. You did? Okay, yeah. so let's talk about that. That was called Class Action yeah. Park. Uh, that I like that documentary more than uh, other documentaries. Why is that? Because it was not 100, it wasn't like 17 episodes. You know what I mean? They got to oh. the point and it was done. You're not a big fan of the... Uh, I don't want to binge watch a documentary. Documentary miniseries, right? No, that's I, what your that's what your complaint is. What is it? I want a, a miniseries. I want to watch Roots. You do? Well, I mean, what other miniseries can you think of? Oh God, there's Rage of Angels. Which I've is never one heard of my such a thing. Oh my God, Rage of Angels. Jacqueline Smith. In part two of Rage of Angels, we agreed not to discuss Joshua's father ever. She'll destroy you. Jennifer Parker is mine, and so is the organization. Already will eat you alive. What is it that you really want? The conclusion, Ring of Angel, tomorrow. Wait, this sounds like a romance novel. Yeah, it's a miniseries, though. Fifty Shades of Grey, the miniseries. I, I don't think, I don't think that's the thing. Starring Brian Doyle Murray. That would be great. I don't think it's happening, though. Gosh darn it. Uh, there's lots of miniseries. Uh, what's is the Lonesome Dove? Is that a? I don't know that one either. There's like a ton. How about usually... James at sixteen? Was that a miniseries? No, that was just a series. Oh, about a miniature guy, a small man. He was not a small man. No, he was a young man. He was a young man. He was coming of age, James coming of age. I should have called it. Okay. He, as he encountered all kinds of problems like drugs and stuff. Okay. And okay. runaways. James at sixteen is great. Well, James at fifteen. You should have seen James at fifteen. Well, did they change his, his age yeah, every time? Yeah, they did. It was James of 15 and then 16. And no. then it was out the door? No one uh, cared The whole thing is creepy. Why would anyone want to watch a story about James? <laughs> Men had a funny look to him. Who was that guy? Oh, I don't know. He was like not John Boy. So, do you not want to talk about All Class Action right. Park? All right, Action Park, the 70s. I'm getting that stuff from the 70s here. Okay. All right, let me give you a little history. Uh, okay. okay. Now, and then you can confirm whether it's true. I will confirm or deny. Okay. Now, my first experience with that area uh-huh. was the Playboy Club, because I don't, I get around. No, okay. just kidding. Uh, Vernon Valley Great Gorge Ski Area. Great Gorge is bursting with winter excitement. 52 slopes with great skiing for experts and beginners. The magnificent $12 million spa is packed with heated pools, aerobics, racquetball, tennis, fireside dining, and sizzling nightlife. Enjoy affordable overnight lodging in luxurious slopeside villas or the new Seasons Hotel. Best of all, Great Gorge is just minutes away in nearby Vernon, New Jersey. Went there in the wintertime, had no concept of Action Park. Now, when was Action Park built? I believe Action Park opened in May of 1978. Ah, yes. Well, that about explains it. Why? Because I went skiing at Vernon Valley before 1978, I believe. Okay. And then you went to Vermont or something? Yeah, but no, but then, and then... Now, at this time, the big craze was skateboarding. Okay. Skateboarding was the shit in 1977, 1978. All right. So I would then, after skiing, I went to Vernon Valley and I went and I hit the skateboard park. 
at Action Park. And I guess it was, but I just recall a skateboard park. I kind of feel like there was a skate park before Action Park, but maybe not. Okay. Maybe not. That was definitely early, early in the Action Park existence. And then, you can take it from here. Then, it seems like in the 80s or late 70s, I guess, what, Action Park? I don't... See, the, in the movie, they had all these rides and stuff that I never saw at Action Park. As we were watching it, you talked to me about the uh, the skateboarding park. And that that skateboarding park, they said, was so dangerous, it was only open for one year. Oh, man, it was great. It was a great skateboard park. It was outdoor. It wasn't any more dangerous than any other skateboard park. It what was so here, bad about it? The skateboard park uh, briefly existed near the ski area's ski school building. Yes. But closed after one season due to poor design. Poor design. Bowls were separated by pavement, which in many cases did not meet the edges smoothly. Ah. Former park employee Tom Fergus was quoted in the magazine Weird New Jersey as saying that the skate park was responsible for so many injuries, we covered it up with dirt and pretended it never existed. Shit. <laughs> so what year was it open? Uh, they don't say, actually. I feel like it was about 1977. It must have probably been just as this, well, this thing's, I said. 78? Yeah, so it probably was open that first year. Yeah, because skateboarding was a main attraction. Like I said, that would have drawn people to the to it because kids were were actively seeking out skateboard parks and there weren't a whole lot in the northern New Jersey area. Oh, so while you're at that uh, site there, can you tell me, did they mention anything about grass skiing? Grass skiing. Now, this would be before Action Park was built because that was an experience that I don't know how many people have ever experienced. But you would strap these short skis with essentially caterpillar type tracks on the bottom and you would take the lift up and work your way down the mountain with no snow on it it is before action park so they allowed you to ski down the mountain on little miniature caterpillar skis i see, I see a picture of grass skis they were heavy <laughs> um they look like the bottom of like a arctic cat or something yep, like a snowmobile exactly. yeah, yeah 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 i can't find anything about it um in Vernon Valley. Valley, though. Yeah, it was nuts. Were people getting hurt then? I don't recall that, but I can't imagine how you wouldn't get hurt. It's almost <clears> like <throat> you're... It looks like you're... You fall right into a rock. There's rocks <clears throat> everywhere. I mean, when there's snow, you have a little, you know... Right. The snow is, like, not that hard. It's literally insane. And you you went there with your friends, or I went there with my brother. We did that for like four hours or something. You couldn't do it more than a couple hours. You would be insanely tired. It wasn't like normal skiing. Anyway, in that environment, you can see how Action Park didn't seem like that outlandish. I mean, mm-hmm. because people were just doing crazy stuff everywhere. The skateboard park, that doesn't. I, I that that park didn't strike me as anything as other than fun. So. It's. I guess you did the. You were. That was part of the Vernon Valley Great Gorge Ski Resort that was there before yes, Action Park. So that's, that's what you did the ski, the grass skiing. On. That's right. Okay. Interesting. Um, so this this documentary is very fun. It's very fun to see people. And I'm. I was thinking as I was watching it. I wonder. If I'm enjoying it more because I'm from Jersey and these people just are are kind of like me or us, you know what I mean? They talk like they're from Jersey. They say, you know, I don't know. They're just they're just from Jersey. The Tarzan swing was cool because there was kind of like an observation deck, and that's where everybody was waiting online. So you might have, I don't know, probably over 75, 100 people at given times that could all see you as you went. Go to do it, your weight would hit, you flip off, you'd like hit the back of your head on the water. No lifeguard would jump in to help you. The water's ice cold. You come up for air, you're all shell shocked, you're probably concussed, and you have like 150 people from New Jersey just being like, Pussy, you fucking bitch, you fucking wiped out, pussy. And that's like when it's at its classiest. It was like, You fucking pussy, just do it. This is Jersey. Oh, you fucking suck. Start swimming, pussy. You know, I mean, it was just, it was, it was actually, it was a very demeaning place. No one yelled at you. No lifeguard ever blew a whistle and was like, hey, stop. 
chanting the word pussy at this injured, bleeding person. Nobody did that. They always tell people no inverted jumps, no obscenities, and people would go up, do backflips, people were dropping their pants. So you got the people who like swing on the Tarzan swing and just like throw up the middle finger and everybody's fucking flipping, or people like taking their dick and balls out, mooning each other. Of course, girls in bikinis would go, they'd hit the water, and of course the bikini top surfaces before the girl does, and you know, you get the big round of applause and you see the girl get to the top, and that happened all the time. I'm not sure if I like these people or the documentary more because it was about Jersey. Were you getting any like kinship feeling with the people talking? Not really. No, not, huh? Not for this. I didn't really. I didn't know. Think anything about Jersey. But they see. This is what I was wondering. I was wondering if, like, the Jersey way of being is off-putting to other people. Well, Jersey Shore is, but that that wasn't like that. No, it's that's just. Not... I don't think it. I don't think so. Okay. Because I, I, when I was little, I was moved around a whole bunch of places, and I just never could click with the kids. Like when I was when I was moved to Montana, my Jersey sensibilities and their Montana way of life couldn't have clashed more. Like they were very friendly, but there was just nobody. So there's something about Jersey and people from Jersey, and maybe New York City too, but there's just a Jersey, and it's almost like. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but, uh, and then when I was in California, when I was little, it was the same. Like I just, I couldn't really mesh really well with people. It was, and then we moved back to Jersey and it was like, ah, oh, home. Be just because of the way people are. What exit? Uh, hey, you're from Jersey, what exit? I think it was exit. 30 something. I don't remember anymore. Everybody's got an exit. Everybody's got an exit in Jersey. Mine was in uh, Dover, New Jersey. So 30, 30 something. My exit was a street name. That's how cool I was. Off of 80? I wasn't off 80. Oh. I was off four. Boom. I think when people say what exit, I think they're meaning 80 though, aren't they? I don't know what. Oh, maybe they're not. I guess I it's just what, what exit. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter because there's so many highways. I guess it doesn't matter. But I don't think they mean Route 4. But anyway, back to Action hey, Park. Route 4. It's all about Route 4, baby. This Roof, podcast. Dude, Route 4 is... is. This I want Route 4. Route 4 isn't even in the top 10 routes I think of when I think of New Jersey. Ah, oh, Route 4, baby. I think it's of all route, about Route 4. I think of Route 46, Route 15, Route 3. Route 4 takes you in and route out. 80. Route 4, you get you in the city. Yep. And Route 4, to get you upstate. That's up what I'm state. saying. That's not Jersey. That's just... That's just... This Route 4 is where you go when you want to get in and out. Mm-mm. Route 4 is almost like a, some sort of uh, elitish snob route. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> hey, take it easy. It's for the rich people of, uh, of Jersey. It's not for uh, us everyday working stiffs of Jersey. Where Route 46 is... Hey, it all happens on Route 4. What? Everything. In my town, the rich people are across the tracks. Guess what? I was on that side of the tracks. You were on the good side of the yeah, tracks. Yeah, I don't know. But then when we moved to that same town, we were on the bad side of the tracks. When you and I moved there. Yeah. You can only afford a house on the poor side of the tracks. But it was a beautiful house. I loved it very I know. Much. Well, that's the thing you don't realize is that the, the poor side of the tracks has as much character as the rich side. But when you're on the rich side, you look down upon it. You literally look down upon it because you're on the hill looking down. Action Park. So I... Um, Did you ever go? I had never been to Action Park because I just had no way to ever get there. It was far from Morris County. Did you ever go to Great Adventure? I hadn't go to Great Adventure until, uh, you know, I was no longer living with parents. Uh yeah, they should have taken you to some amusement parks. But then again, you might have not liked them because you seem to not like those kind of things. I don't. I, I lack the gene of thrill. I know. So I don't, like, I don't like to be thrilled in any way. Isn't that weird? That's all right. It's not, though. It makes me upset. It yeah. makes me upset because it's, it's not even I don't enjoy it, but I am fearful of it. So, like, I can't go on any fun rides. I remember... Um, when I was 
I don't know, 17 maybe. I did go to, I think it was Great Adventure maybe, or maybe something else, but there was that, they had one of those rides where that dropped you. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like the Tower of Terror or something. You went on one of those? I went on one of those. I didn't <laughs> know. I was with a bunch of people that I was working with, I think at McDonald's or something. And, you gotta uh, investigate your rides. I had no idea, dude. And I literally thought I was gonna have a heart attack. And uh, it was, you know. What, it went up and just dropped? That's right. It was like a free fall drop for, you know, probably two seconds, but it was crazy. And uh, I'd, I've never been on a roller coaster. Because I, I just know, I just know watching them makes me fucking, I, I get, I literally get fearful for my life of watching them. So uh, something, probably maybe something in the way I was raised or something. You never went on the cyclone? <laughs> no. Uh-uh. No. God, no. Cyclone was fun. See, I'm, I like that you like those things. We could go on the cyclone on a weekday and there'd be no one there. There's no line. Uh -huh. Back when New York City was... Not inhabited as much. That's not true. Just I was going to say, I think it's been inhabited since we've been alive. Well, here's what I'm saying. Okay. Action Park. Yeah. Had some rides that I never saw. Right. We were watching the documentary and I was like, did you go on that? And Dave was like, I don't even remember that being there. That <clears throat> ball attached to the track? No, no one ever rode that. Really? Many of the rides were experimental. And on paper, the design looked good. Uh, but in reality, once the ride was turned on, it was not fit for a safe ride by the average person in public. One of those rides was the man in the ball on the ball. The man in the ball on the ball was this giant ball that we had with, a, with ball bearings inside it with another ball. And you would open up two doors and get in the ball to go down the mountain. And what he did is the guy built it with PVC pipe all the way down the mountain. I guess it's a great idea. You can see how someone would think that'd be a lot of fun. And I think it might work and be relatively safe. It turned out, you know, there were, there were limitations to it. It's a crazy concept. I mean, it's so big and so heavy and so unwieldy that there's no way it's going to stay in any kind of track. The day that we were going to put a live man in it, it got really hot. And he didn't realize the PVC expanded. So when we put the live man in the ball and tested it to go down the mountain, the ride just fell apart, and the guy ended up going down the ski slope right over 94 into the swamp down below. It was unbelievable. That's the thing. The action park was built right around a highway. So it's this ball just went turning right into the into the highway. I mean, geez, this I'd say the action park was really dangerous. Uh. And you said you had a lot of fun there. Did you ever see someone get hurt there? Uh, I saw some people fly off the Alpine slide. That was your favorite. That was your favorite thing, right? Yeah, they, I saw some. You get graphite burns. I was, saw some people get their skin taken off of their arm or their leg, that did, kind of stuff. But did I never you ever saw anything get this... that bad. You know what? I'm really surprised they didn't require you just to wear a helmet. Right. If you wore a helmet, that might have saved a lot of people. Because That's those, true. Because those those friction burns were bad, but not the end of the world. And quite frankly, like I said, if you were bigger, you were going to get more hurt. And if you were small, you were aerodynamically designed better for hugging the turns and controlling your weight shift in the Alpine slide. So the Alpine slide was really best for young people. Small, right. small young people. Because you were little. You must have been 13 or 14. Yeah. And much bigger than that, you started getting too much weight. Right. And people would have problems. Not only that, much bigger than that, but also it seemed like people were drinking a lot there. Mm, they might have been drinking. They had like a beer tent, beer fests. I could see people getting really drunk and then going on the Alpine slide. And I don't think you had to be drunk to get hurt on the Alpine slide. No. No. You, you just, just had to not control your... <clears throat> you had to not... It, do you think the you Alpine slide it was up to you? It didn't. It wasn't something where if you if you put full throttle, 
the whole time, you would have hurt yourself. Uh -huh. So you had the ability to hurt yourself if you didn't control what you were doing. But you have the ability to hurt yourself when you're skiing if you don't control what you're doing. It's the same concept. You, you, you have to control your action. Well, that's why I was going to ask you, do you think that you did well on that alpine slide ride because you skied so much? Like you Probably, kind of yeah. knew what to do around the turns and stuff? Yes, I did. And you know what else? What? Action Park wasn't the only place to have an alpine slide. Oh. And they had alpine slides up in Vermont where I would go. Oh, okay. Now, Similar? Pico had its own alpine slide. What was the name of it? Pico Peak. Pico Peak. The ski area right near Killington. Now, that was a smaller family-owned ski area, but they had an alpine slide, and every summertime, it was open. Was it? I was there often. Now, can you tell me, was it similar to the one at Action Park? Yep. I was... Maybe even better, as far as I can remember. I don't know. Maybe it was safer. I don't know. Oh, that's what I'm trying to get at. It, I didn't find it to be safer. I was able to accomplish the same thing I did on that one as the other one, which was go very fast and in control at the same time. Were the uh, Was the thing you wrote on the same, too? Chairlift? <laughs> no, the thing that you, you yes, rode down. Yes, alpine slides were all the same. They were alpine slides. But you, the thing you rode on. Like, weren't yes, you on the little vehicle or something? that's what I'm talking about, the slide itself. The car, right? The mm -hmm. car. Did it have? It had a like a some sort of a stick or something. A little throttle stick in the middle that was all the way back would break. All the way forward was full throttle. In the center, you're coasting. Okay, and some people said that those things weren't working very well. I never counted one that didn't work. Oh, okay, okay. And what were they made out of? Metal. Uh, it seems like the carts were probably fiberglass. And the stick was metal. They had one at Bromley, too. What's that? Bromley Mountain. Where's, is that Vermont, too? It's Vermont. I see. <clears throat> when you were going, was there a sense that this place is dangerous? Like, did your parents ever know? No, nope, no they, sense that it was dangerous. They never knew? They didn't read the, the articles and they weren't didn't make it to their papers? I never heard anything about it. Don't go there. Like, every article they showed seemed to be from the Daily Record, which is a Morris... Daily County. Record. We didn't have that. Yeah, that's the Morristown Daily Record. It's the Morris County newspaper that seemed to, and but there just there was also some sort of Vernon local newspaper. But what was the local paper to uh, Bergen County? Bergen Record. Okay, so it did not make it to the Bergen Record. I don't know. I never heard any problems about it. You never heard that it was crazy. When did you realize it, it was dangerous? Yeah. Like Not just until recently? everyone started talking about yeah. it, I guess. I mean, it was dangerous if you were on, out of control. Right. But everything's dangerous if you're out of control. That's true. So, I don't know. It wasn't dangerous for me. I was in control. I knew my limits and I knew what I could do. I never hurt myself skateboarding. I never hurt myself that. I hurt myself very rarely skiing. I just happened to be a perfect person. Oh, shit. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh... So, <clears throat> you know, big people would, would get that hurt. I saw big people getting hurt. Big, clunky people. Right. They were too big for the rides. Yeah, that place wasn't for adults. Well, not the Alpine Slide, anyway. One of the reasons the Alpine Slide was so dangerous is because it wasn't designed to keep you on. If you didn't touch your brakes in a couple of key spots, you were going to fly off. You'd go up into this lip, and if you didn't know how to distribute your weight when you came out of that bank turn, the thing would flip on you. And when the thing flipped on you, that's when it started to hurt. You had kids breaking their collarbones, their skin ripped off. And when I was in high school, you would come back to school in the fall and you'd see all these kids bandaged up and you'd walk in the hallways and they were like, yeah, alpine slide, huh? Yeah. Now the water park is a little fruity. A little light in, the, light in the step, if you ask me. So I was never a huge fan of the water park. It says here that Action Park featured three separate attraction areas. The Alpine Center, Motor World, and Water World. Now, the Alpine Center was for me. Water World was always way too crowded, and Motor World I couldn't afford. Or I was too young. So, you, oh, you think you had to be a certain age? or it was Some of those morning? rides, I think you had to be a certain age or something. For some reason, I could, some of those, like, I don't know. 
I, I would have been all day at the boats and all that if I could have done it, but I'm, I don't know. Maybe it was too expensive. For some reason, I didn't do that. I spent little time across the highway. Oh, okay. So everything, all the things that you didn't do were on the other side of the highway. That's true. That's where the motor world and the boating was. Did you eat food there? Yeah, you eat in the cafeteria like a ski area. Where was the where was the cafeteria? Was it inside the lodge, the ski lodge, which was on the alpine area? Yeah, yeah. So you would. How long? They might have had some outdoor shacks or something too. I'm not sure. How long was the alpine ride? Well, the chairlift would take about ten minutes, and the ride would take about forty five seconds. Maybe how, yeah. no, a couple minutes, maybe. Really? Yeah, it was quick. If you were good at it. Oh, and that's the other thing. The problem with Alpine Slide is if it was crowded, you couldn't have fun because people would be in front of you. Oh, shit. And in reality, well, one, they're supposed to either wait for them to clear the track, Mm -hmm. or if they didn't, you would catch up to someone, and then you had to not hit them from behind. Oh, and, and I'm sure some people have definitely smacked into other people from behind. Okay. But when it wasn't crowded, you could have fun. But 90% of the people I encountered would go slower than me. Oh, really? So they were a pain in the ass. You were tearing it up. Yeah, but they would get in my way. <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> would you would you call them pussies like most everyone else at the Action Park, it mm, seems? Prob- probably, but not to their face. Oh. I kind of dug that everybody was just calling each other pussies if, if we're not doing stuff. Yeah, that was the water park. That was fucking hysterical. I did some of the stuff in the water park, but I uh, What did you do? Uh, I went down something very steep on my back. Oh, you did? The, the drop water. thing? Yeah, well, they had a couple of them. Oh, okay. One was worse than the other. I didn't do the worst one, but I did one of them. Uh, and then that uh, ride where they were complaining that people were getting hurt, were getting hurt in the uh, rafts, the round raft ride. The Colorado River ride actually began life as a lazy river ride. But during construction, Gene decided he wanted a realistic simulation of class four rapids. Early test pilots reportedly came out unconscious, forcing him to turn down the ride's intensity. There was one section where tubes tended to go right up an embankment and everyone was looking at it expectantly, waiting for them to fly over the side. You would hear people audibly go, ah, ah, when they didn't actually fall to their doom. I mean, we're holding on, getting slammed into stuff, the thing's getting stuck, we have to kind of stick our own legs out and push our way out, and then we go past a lifeguard chair that, you guessed it, is empty. Nobody there keeping an eye on anything. Gene got involved during the construction process, and he said, look, when you go down the Colorado River in a raft, there's not some guy in a lifeguard shirt pushing your raft down the river. And I said, look, Gene, this is not the Colorado River. It's a water park. I did that. That wasn't a big deal. And then the other slide where you slid on your back and went through the tube and fell 10 feet into the water, I did that one. Oh, you did? Yeah. The worst part about that was the water was freezing. Oh, and the other worst part about Action Park was when we were doing that ride, Mm -hmm. we put down our belongings so they didn't get soaked. Uh Uh-oh. And when we came back, our wallets and weed was stolen. Uh Uh-oh. So that was fun. That sucks. Yeah, especially the part about the weed. Well... Okay, but and just having anything stolen sucks. It's it just was this classic feeling. Jersey bullshit. It is classic Jersey bullshit, isn't it? So after that, I kind of soured. That might have been the last time I was there. That was in the 80s. Now, apparently there were five rides in the Alpine Center. Which were those? The uh, Action Park Gladiator Challenge. I don't know what that is. It allowed guests to compete against other guests in an obstacle course. When did that start? Oh, 1992. Yes, yeah, after my time. Okay, so the Alpine Slide. Last time I went to there was probably around 85. Oh, okay. So then you missed the Snapple Snap Up Whippersnapper ride. Yeah. 
the skateboard park. That was the, one of the best parts. The Transmobile. I don't know what that is. That sounds homophobic. It says the Transmobile or mobile was a monorail that took riders from the Alpine Center across 94 to the Cobblestone Village. I never went on that, but that's cool. Riders would sit sideways in cars built for two people. Huh. I don't think that was there when I was there, was it? Maybe it was. Um, let's see. It doesn't, it's not giving me a year for that. So when you went into the Alpine slide area, it was the only, that was the only thing there? Mm -hmm. Skateboard park, Alpine slide. Oh, okay. That's about it. All right. Uh, let's see here. It says that, uh. The chutes the sleds traveled in were made of concrete, fiberglass, and asbestos. <laughs> Which, good, yes? Good thing I didn't crash. You never crashed. No, so you, I wouldn't, didn't come in contact with the asbestos. The tendency of guests to, wait, to ride in bathing suits made the problem worse. I guess the abrasions. Yes. Did, were you in your bathing suit? No, I knew better than to do that, but I probably was in my shorts. Interesting. The path underneath the chairlift resulted in verbal harassment and spitting from passengers. I never had that happen. Going up for their turn. I, I think was, it got worse after a while. I was going to say, maybe when you were there in the 70s, early 80s, it wasn't quite as bad. And maybe that next generation of teenagers is where uh, things went really wrong. I think so. Um, the first fatality was in 1980. And that was from that Alpine slide. Let me tell you something. What do they got there? Over their history of Action Park, three people died? Six people. You know, six people died. Well, that is a shame, and I'm sorry for their families. Of course. Now, that being said, oh boy. how many people die over a 20-year span uh, at a ski area? Okay. Like, just say, Pick for example, it. Killington, Vermont, and no pun intended. I'm just seeing, like, individual articles about people who died. Let's see. Oh, my God. No one's compiling these numbers. Okay, so in 2017. Uh, that's one year. Yes, but yeah. it says six people have died on Vermont ski slopes this season. An increase over previous years. So three of the deaths involved resort visitors who were killed in accidents, two in crashes into trees, and one after falling into deep snow. Two other skiers died of natural causes on the mountain. But that was six people in one year. Yes. Action Park had six people pass away in, what was it, 18 years? Yeah, and so now they probably also had some people break their neck and some other shit. I don't know if anyone was paralyzed, but that also happens at ski areas. Yes. So how much and now and Action Park was built on a ski mountain, so it's all within the spirit of skiing. Gotcha. As is skateboard parks, surfing, skiing, the same kind of mentality. I mean, how easy would it be to die surfing? And no one's complaining about surfing. So I feel sorry for the people who were hurt, like I said, but I don't think the place is as dangerous as you're making it out to be compared to everything else. I mean, just going into New York City back in the day was dangerous. So White, white boy couldn't walk above 96th Street in, in Amsterdam back in the day. Uh, from the first quarter of 2005 to the first quarter of 2006, Disney reported four deaths and 19 injuries at Disney World. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, me for president. Okay. You for president. I, I don't. I, I'm bringing back Action Park and we're going to call it Go Fuck Yourself Park. Pussies. Yeah. <laughs> and the only ride we're going to have is the Alpine Slide because that's the only thing I like. 
That's but you know what you've brought up an uh, well, the only thing a we're really gonna improve upon is no asbestos. I uh, would do this one without the asbestos. Yeah, let's 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 cut the asbestos right out. Let's get Elon Musk in there to uh, Muskus to create something. E Muskus. All right. So you see what I'm saying? I see. This is a big fabrication. How bad was it when everything else is so bad? Well, and you know, I was also thinking that if this was happening now, it would it would have been canceled for the most. Uh, yeah, I mean, little uh, infraction. Yeah, like people's bathing suits coming off. Right. In the water by accident. Right. That they would have they they would have been cancel culture would have swept swept in and uh, ruined Action Park for everyone because somehow somebody lost a bikini top, and uh, you know back then there would be cheering, but now it's the most egregious thing ever to happen. More people die at Disney than at Action Park. And uh, all these people were saying how insane everything was. And yeah, it's insane, but man, come on. Skiing's insane. That's insane. You let little kids just go off on the mountain and ski by themselves? It's insanity compared to other stuff. Yep. Well, not to mention, what about these fucking, you go, you go to a baseball, uh, one of these baseball things, you're batting cage. How, you can just be a 10-year-old and have a ball 80 miles an hour thrown at you by an automatic arm when you have a, an aluminum bat and that's safe? Yeah. You have you have to control your action. You can't just step in front. Of, you can't just put your teeth in front of the ball. You'll be hurt severely. It's Your destiny is in your hands. That's, you know, Action Park is no different. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that Action Park, the only difference between Action Park... And say a Disney or a Great Adventure or Killington, Vermont. It was a cocaine. I, well, I don't know oh. if it's the cocaine, but it's the kids and it's the recklessness of the guy who owned Action Park. Yeah, now that man was a lunatic. Yeah. Of the way he was uh, embezzling and juggling and cheating and frauding. Yeah, he didn't want to get insurance or maybe he couldn't get insurance so what he did was he made pretend insurance. Like he started his own pretend insurance thing in the Cayman Islands and said, oh, here's my insurance people. Action Park's growing reputation posed an important question. What insurance company would dare cover this creatively designed park? Gene didn't believe in the concept of insurance. He thought if you got hurt, you should be responsible. He shouldn't have to pay an insurance company. However, he needed insurance to stay in business. It was part of the terms of his lease. So he had a workaround. He created his own fake insurance company based in the Cayman Islands. Its name, the very real and very legitimate sounding London and World Assurance. This company's documents were very, very homemade. They looked like they were ginned up in a basement. The letterhead was not official. Might as well have been on napkins. These crimes would attract the attention of the state and eventually lead to a large-scale investigation, three-day hearing, and a 110-count indictment. Top officials from the Vernon Valley Recreation Association today refused to testify before the State Commission of Investigation. Gene Mulvihill did not appear, citing client privilege. The outcome? Gene pled guilty to counts of fraud, theft, and conspiracy, and was ordered to give up control of Action Park, which was partially on state land. How do you do that and then retain ownership once again? He lost it and they sold it back to him after that whole crime. I think... What is that? Well, that one woman said she thought that there was some sort of mob ties to it. So mob that, ties? Mm -hmm. Jesus. So that may or may not be, be true. Um, but uh, here, let me just read a little bit. The idea for the park began in 1976 when Eugene Mulvihill and his company, Great American Recreation, the owners of the recently combined Vernon Valley Great Gorge Ski Area, wanted to find a way to generate revenue during the summer. So he already owned Vernon Valley Great Gorge. Mm -hmm. And he just the wanted... The was not enough. Yeah. Gene Mulvihill and his grass skiing experience. But no, he couldn't satisfy himself. He had to get bigger. 
That year, they followed the trend of many other ski areas and opened a 2,700-foot-long alpine slide down one of the deep ski trails. Bam! Big boom! Bam! That's what I'm saying. Ski areas had that shit. That's why I knew about <laughs> alpine slide. Alpine slide was the greatest thing to come to summertime. It seems like you really enjoyed it. Man, I, if I could build one on my own property right now, I would. We could. Yeah. Okay. Can you get one that's asbestos free? 2,700 feet long. That's a nice long slide. The thing is, with the alpine slide, you need a method to get you and the slide back up the hill. Right. Repetitively. You need, what, what is it? What was it? The chairlift. Yeah, or something. So in the summer of 78, Mulva Hill added two water slides and a go-kart track. And named the collection of rides the Vernon Valley Summer Park. Yeah, I feel like I went there and maybe did the go-karts back then. Oh, you did? Yeah. I have a long-standing affinity with golf, uh, with uh, go-karts. You do? Yeah. I had a couple when I was a kid, and I always liked them. And uh, so... I can't remember if I just had go-karts or if I actually did that. Oh, I see what you're saying. I've been on go-karts at places before. They usually had a little, like, speed governor, so you couldn't go that fast. All right. Uh, Maybe I didn't do that. The following year, more water slides and a small deep water swimming pool, as well as tennis courts and a softball field, were added to what became known as the Water World section of Action Park. See, it started out small and civilized, and then it got insane. By 1980, Motor World had been carved out of the swampy land the ski area owned across Route 94. Uh huh. Combined, these areas formed one of North America's earliest modern water parks. Ultimately, the small park consisting of the Alpine Slide and two water slides evolved to a major destination with 75 rides. Well, this is all spurred on, too, by the fact that Hefner had his Playboy Mansion there. So people are already coming to the area. I got, oh, uh uh-huh. Other than for skiing. 35 of the rides were motorized, self-controlled rides, and 40 water slides. Oh, okay. Wow, that's a lot of water slides. Yeah, it blew up after a while. Action Park's most successful years were the early and mid-80s. That makes sense. Most rides were still operating, and the park's dangerous reputation had not yet developed. Exactly. In 1982, two guests died at the park within a week of each other. That's a bad week. Leading to the permanent closure of one ride. That's a week you don't want to stop sniffing glue, if you know what I'm talking about. Despite this, people continued to come in massive numbers. The park's fortunes began to turn with two deaths in the summer of 84, and the legal and financial problems that stemmed from the ensuing lawsuits. Yeah, well, we already talked about you know, how many people died at Disney. Right. No, honestly, yes. Didn't someone get eaten by an alligator at Disney? First breaking news, a two-year-old dragged into the water by a gator at Disney, and right now investigators admit the outcome of the search for the little boy likely will end with tragic results. Mark Lehman is there live this morning. Mark, what have you learned? Justin, an absolute nightmare of a situation for the family visiting from Nebraska. Deputies say the family was just enjoying an evening in the sand. Their two-year-old boy was splashing around in about a foot of water when the unthinkable happened. An alligator roughly four to seven feet snatched up the toddler. The boy's father tried desperately to grab his son, but was unable to get a firm grip. That little boy was pulled into the water and has not been seen since. That is bad. You know that big, beautiful hotel? Yes. That's the one. It's not so beautiful now, eh? I mean, it's alligators are fucking everywhere in Florida. They are everywhere. Somebody needs to tell them to get the fuck out of Disney. I was, uh, I was telling somebody the story, I don't know who, all over Florida, no matter what attraction you're at, there mm. are these like Kodak moment signs Yeah. where you can, this is a great spot to take a picture. Yeah. So they're, they're everywhere. Disney, everywhere. SeaWorld. Yeah. So I saw a, what I, th- I thought it was like a bronze gator that you could, could sit on to take a picture uh-huh. on the banks of, you know, just in the grassy area alongside this river yeah. at Silver Springs. Yeah. It was not. Yes. It was a real alligator. Yes, they were there. They're everywhere. And this is, to me, that. That's crazy. Like Silver Springs, you can literally be walking down a path and run into an alligator. 
just that to me is more dangerous than Action Park. Ah, you just got a great idea. Okay. Let's <laughs> combine the two. Okay. Silver I'll... Springs Alligator Park. Okay. Action. Action. I don't think so. Here we go. Run for your life. We're not kidding. Yeah. No. Uh, and Silver Springs is probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been, right? It's very nice. Um, and you and I have been there a couple times, or just the- it's got a lot of nice not. It's got a lot of nice water. Uh huh. Very clear water. You go on the ride to show you the spots where everything was filmed. Yeah, like almost every water movie or underwater movie ever filmed in the early I don't know fifties, sixties, maybe even. I want to go back there right now. Oh? I'm going. Okay. Boom. Okay. Bye. <laughs> But it's 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 beautiful and it's. They got a motor park. They got a uh, car museum there too. Yes. How about them apples. That's where I fell in love with the uh, Gaylord Gladiator. All right. Beautiful, most beautiful car I've ever seen, and I mean that's one of those. Cars, I think there's eight made, maybe. It's like yeah. totally not a lot made, and they're just. They're just. It's just. Forget it. They're just gorgeous. Um, anywho. Silver Springs is great. It's dangerous because of this fucking... Their alligators are everywhere. Alligators, probably. Well, you know, I just... And I, I, I just wanted to bring up the cancel culture thing because I feel like... I feel like cancel culture is ruining everything. Like, I think it would have ruined Action Park... Right? They did ruin Ashton Park. No, that was just lawsuits. Yeah, but I mean, six people passing away in 18 or 20 years is a, is a bit of a problem. That's, But when you have six people dying at Disney every year or six people killed in Vermont skiing every year. 11 people died at a Who concert. 11 people dying at a Who concert. Uh, I feel like... The, this is the thing. I feel like when they when that first gentleman died on the alpine ski slide, it looks like they went and tried to they put hay bales alongside those those problem areas, I guess. Do you recall the hay bales? Uh well, I have to say that hay bales were a common sight at ski areas. They were? Yeah, oh, I recall okay. hay bales here and there for sure. Did you see, do you recall them in Action Park though? I don't remember. But that wouldn't surprise me. How many times do you think you went to Action Park? Was it something you went every nah, weekend? No, I probably went, you know, a handful, handful of times at most. But see, all this blurs together because I went to Alpine Slides a lot more. I happened to live on the mountain there at one point where that Alpine Slide was. Oh, in Vermont, you mean? Yeah, so I must have done that, you know, countless, countless times. Was it as long? Was it 2,700 feet long? Yeah, I feel like it was pretty fucking long. You can maybe look it up. I don't know. It was long. It was long for sure. It was from the top of a ski run to the bottom of the mountain. So. Oh, it was the whole thing? It was pretty long. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. I, that seems like it's a really long ride. It was fun. Is it faster to do to ski down or faster to do the alpine thing? Well, skiing, you had more options there were more higher chairlifts. You could go further than that. Oh, I see. There were other areas. So skiing was more of an adventure. But was it faster? Uh, skiing's faster. Okay. So maybe that's another thing is that you were used to skiing and going really fast. So you, you yeah. weren't... Uh... Do you think Action Park was more popular than the, ski than the skiing? It might have been. Oh, Okay. So there might have just been a lot of people that didn't know. There are a lot of people who didn't know how to ski who could easily just fucking fuck around at a water park. Yeah. Skiing's more of a specialized thing. It seems like this guy, this uh, Eugene Mulvihill, it seems like whenever he had a ride uh, put in or some sort of, not necessarily a ride, but just some... It was more extreme. He just, he tried to amp it up a bit. Like the wave pool, the wave area, that was more aggressive than most places. When I think back to the wave pool, I remember being excited to go in it. 
And even as a young kid walking up and going like, oh, no fucking way, this is nuts. This is, I mean, shoulder to shoulder human beings in a wave pool that was far too violent and powerful. If you go to the beach, that water is buoyant. So when the waves come in, you go up, and when the waves go down, you go down. But a freshwater pool doesn't do that. We'd often have people that would, would jump into the water that didn't know how to swim. I can't tell you how many times someone would come up to me and say, sir, how deep is that water? And I wouldn't even tell them how many feet. i said, say, it's over your head. I'd turn around and they would jump in. When people got to shoulder height depth, we call that area the death zone. Panic would set in and they'd grab everybody and anybody around them. I've seen literally families of eight, 10 or 12 people taking each other down. The guards that we used to call it the grave pool, the guards at the grave pool, they couldn't relax for a second. To break a new lifeguard in, they'd be assigned to the death chair. And that was the lifeguard stand that overlooked the death zone on the wave pool. And literally the first 30 minutes to 45 minutes sitting in the death chair, that new lifeguard would save three to four to five people. People thought that drowning at the Action Park wave pool was part of the ride. They thought it was part of the experience. They expected to drown at the Action Park wave pool. Lifeguards at the wave pool had their hands full. The water was murky enough that bodies often couldn't be spotted below the surface. The culprit? A mixture of muddy runoff from a nearby hill, human waste, suntan lotion, and gore from open wounds. That was one of the reasons they used to stop the thing every so many minutes, so they could scan the bottom and make sure there wasn't any bodies there that they had missed. You see, you were there for that? I wasn't in it, but I've been in other ones and they're not like that. No, this one was like, almost like hurricane. Not to mention how crowded it is. Yeah. It was so crowded, I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, see, he, he would get a, a ride or some sort of attraction installed, but as they were installing it, he would say, well, let's change this to make it more extreme. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't appreciate that. I think, you know, when, when, it's, when you're saying to the engineers, let's engineer this to be a little bit more extreme, that's one thing. But when you are just uh, saying, it, you know, on a napkin saying, hey, instead of building it this way, let's, let's add this thing here. I don't think that's very safe. It was an insanely, I don't know what you'd call it, not promiscuous, uh, very... Uh, precarious? Eh, precarious, exactly. Every but, it, precarious. but according to that documentary, it was also very promiscuous. I know. There seemed to be like 14 to 17-year-old kids working there, drinking... Spending the night, hitting the beer tent. Spending the night. And, and just, uh, like this guy treated all these kids as if they were like uh, adults or something. Like the one kid was 16 and he was the head of security. Or something. So there, there, there were problems within Action Park. Definitely. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it was the rides. I think it was just the, uh, the crazy goings on. I mean, I, you know, I think it, it's the, a lot of those people that they interviewed, uh, some were, some were uh, workers, some were uh, patrons. Yeah. I bet some more, I bet more people died at Grateful Dead concerts over 20 years than at Action Park. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so this was about uh, Action Park. I don't know how much we talked about Action Park. A good amount. What? A good amount. We did? Okay. What else can you say about it? Well, I can tell you the rides. It was a fun little spot. The worst part was the water park. What do you mean the worst part as far as dangerous or just... Eh, just it was, you know, no, just in terms of it was the less, the least cool part, in my opinion. It was the least action. It wasn't your type of fun. Eh, it's all right. It was just a lot of lines, a lot of <clears throat> cold water. I mean, you're saying it's the least of the action, but I think it was probably the most popular part of the park. I guess so. Did you do the skydiving thing? 
I don't feel like that was there when I was there. Oh, 87 it says. Yeah, I think I didn't go there. I think I didn't go there past 85. The whole wallet getting stolen thing, that kind of, that put the icing on the cake. Yeah. And by besides, like I said, as he got older, you're going to get hurt there more. So I outgrown it by that point. It says here that uh, the, the park sold beer in many kiosks on the grounds. So pretty much it, everywhere you went, you probably were able to get a beer. That makes sense. And relaxed enforcement of the drinking age. Hey, now. It says here, doctors treating the injured often reported that many of them were intoxicated. So at that point, I mean... <coughs> Well, maybe that's why I didn't get hurt. I wasn't ever intoxicated. So I feel like this guy, Gene Mulvihill, he doesn't seem like a nice person. He seems like a bit of a dick. Mm -hmm. That being said, I feel like Action Park, the hubbub around it, while it did seem dangerous, I don't think it's any less dangerous or more dangerous than any other thing that's out there. Uh, that's somewhat true. People are dying in, in all these places. Well, it's more dangerous than, than like Disney, but... But people are dying at Disney, too. Yeah. Six people a year. I think there's more people getting hurt at Action Park. Right. In the documentary, they said that if people were able to... If people didn't leave Action Park in an ambulance, then they weren't counted as an injury. I mean, countless people every day got injured there. That's yeah. for sure. But that's what happens. People countlessly and injure themselves skiing every day. Yeah, I mean, you BMX muscle, biking. You hurt your knee, yeah. your back. You get frostbite. Who's going to report that? Right. It's called having a life. Well, also, I think are <clears> they <throat> are they just trying to make it so fun? Anything that's kind of Dangerous fun is not going to be legal anymore. No fun for you. That's what I'm saying. Like, what what's going to happen? It's just going to get worse and worse. Only online. Have fun online. Yeah, in your house with your mask. Virtual action park. So then, then you'll fall off your balcony. I feel like that's what I'm saying. That this cancel culture is is coming around hard and fast. Uh, and it's just going to make it so you can't do anything. You, you cannot do anything. It's the nanny state, and we're not going to allow you to go on an alpine slide. You know, how long before bikes are too dangerous? Yeah, they are. Yeah, Motorcycles. Yeah. They you know are too I mean? dangerous. Bikes are, bikes are dangerous. Well, it's going to be, well, you can't have it. You can't drive your own car. Only these driverless cars are safe. It's going to, they're, they're pushing this, this shit on us. Um, you got a point there. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose and it's some really big plan or, well, actually it's probably, is just that there is no war, but I, I feel like action park after we've looked at the evidence here, there is, it is no more dangerous than any other attraction. Mm, pretty much. Your ears hurt? My ears hurt me, man. All right. I've been in Action Park too long. I fell on my ears. Okay. Let me tell you something. All right. You got your ears on? I do. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. This has been episode... You have something else to say? Ammo box. Okay. Not everybody watches our videos. Get an ammo box. All right. Uh, anyway, this has been episode 107 of the Middle Age Cool Kids Super Terrific Podcast featuring your pals Dave and Shecky. Uh, if you want to catch up on episodes you might have missed, you can head over to MacPodcast.com. All of our episodes are there. We also have an online radio station, MacRadio.com. And we have a YouTube channel. Well, you know what? You can just... Go on YouTube and search for Dave and Shecky or Dave's Reactions. Um, all of our stuff will come up. 
Uh, Dave has done. We're getting close to the 100th reaction. What do you think? All right. All right. Uh, that's it for this week. We will see you next time. America? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. What? Hey, guys.